a vinyl community, Elliot here with uh, Lazy Dogs Records, and I did some shopping on Discogs recently and got three shipments in today. Thought I'd share with you. I prefer crate digging, of course, but when there's something I really want, I can't find it, and I've looked everywhere and can't seem to put my hands on it. I will uh, will go to turn to Discogs and and purchase from there. Uh, I'd like to follow a few rules when I do that. Number one, I try not to buy from anybody that's rated below 99% uh, in, uh, in their uh, customer relations ratings. I try to look for someone that offers uh, a flat rate, say $5 shipping, and then I'll find what I want. I'll, I'll order it or I'll put it in my cart and say uh, this one dealer uh, had five dollars for as many as you buy put that in the cart and then I'll go and click on the filters for his records and click on under five dollars and then I'll go looking through different genres jazz country and bluegrass soul things like that and I'll look for records I'm interested in that are you know two or three dollars things like that and then I'll, I'll buy several of those with that one shipment and that reduces the cost overall cost of those records maybe I wouldn't have bought those records if it hadn't been for the uh, uh, the buying the, the record I was trying to you know fill a hole in the collection with or something like that so that's that's kind of kind of what I go by I try not to buy too often on discogs and I'm only buy stuff I know I really want not not many maybes or things well I'll trade this with somebody else later or something like that uh, sometimes you have to just buy the one record and that's what I did in the first uh, order which is a new grass revival too late to turn back now isn't that some great artwork there so, yeah mallards there I guess and uh, nothing too uh, special about the back cover. And this is a live recording from Telluride, Colorado. Sam Bush is considered the king of Telluride, I believe, these days. He's played there forever. And he's probably their most popular uh, act when they uh, when they do their festivals. It's a sealed copy. I got it for a very reasonable price. And another New Grass Revival record I wanted to uh, fill in my collection with is uh, Barron, Co Barron County. Love the artwork there. Really did a good job of the artwork. And this, the, the first new grass was from 77, the live album. And this one is from 79, I believe. Yes, 79. And there you see the band. Chester's trying to get in the picture here. Chester, if you'll come around here, you can be seen. It's fine. And about two more. There's Chester. Hey, say hey to everybody. Look, look right here. Look. There you go. All right. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. All right. I love you too. All right. And I got two more records. These were only $2 a piece. Uh, two Rita Coolidge. Uh, early Rita Coolidge records. Uh, nice feeling and the ladies not for sale. The ladies not for sale believes a song written by Chris Christopherson. Now, I don't know whether Chris and Rita were an item yet or not. That may be how they... They uh, met each other through her recording one of his songs. And then I got 11 records from one dealer, and they offered the $5 for as many records as you wanted to order. The, what I was looking for was specifically this record. This is, uh, this is uh, Steve Bassett's only major label release, although he's done several other releases. This is on Columbia. Uh, Steve Bassett's from Richmond, Virginia. He's a soul and R&B singer and has led a very interesting life. If you see Delbert McClinton anywhere along the East Coast, you probably see Steve Bassett uh, playing keyboards and singing uh, with Delbert. He uh, has his own band. He tours the East Coast when Delbert's on the East Coast a lot, that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, this, he recorded this in 1984. And Jerry Wexler is the producer, and Barry Beckett, and the whole gang at, in Muscle Shoals, Sheffield, Alabama, uh, are on this. David Hood's playing the bass, and uh, you know all the usual suspects. Uh, 
Jimmy Johnston. Jimmy Johnston's on the guitar. Mac McNally's on this album as well. Uh, but I wanted to pick this up. He's, uh, I read his biography. He's got a biography called uh, Sing Loud, I believe is the name of it. Very interesting. Lived an interesting life. Grew, grew up in Richmond. Lived there pretty much all his life. Uh, when he was a teenager, he went to college at uh, Atlantic Christian in Wilson, North Carolina. Didn't stay very long because he was too into music. Met a guy there that used to be in the Strawberry Alarm Clock. Ed King turned out uh, they played together some back then how Ed King ended up in eastern North Carolina after his success with Strawberry Alarm Clock I'll never know but he did and uh, he was uh, this was prior to him uh, Ed King joining Leonard Skinner uh, oh and uh, Steve Bassett and Robin Thompson wrote Sweet Virginia Breeze which is the state song for the state of Virginia Robin Thompson used to play in the band that Bruce Springsteen was in before he went solo with E Street Band. I always like to pick up any of uh, Mother Earth's albums. And uh, of course, Tracy Nelson's the lead singer for Mother Earth. So anything by Tracy Nelson or Mother Earth, I pick up. And interesting little tidbit here. I don't know the dog's name, but this dog is on a bunch of her albums, Mother Earth and our Tracy Nelson albums. Uh, must be her dog, I'm assuming. Don't know what his name is. Be interested in all that. Chester would be interested, wouldn't you, boy? Yes, Chester would like to know. Also, one of the things I collect are Capricorn, original Capricorn record label albums. You don't have to be first press or anything like that, but I just like to get all the Capricorn records. Of course, the Alma Brothers, Marshall Tucker, Wet Willie, easy to find. But some of that stuff's not nearly as easy. Did you know Kitty Wells did an album on Capricorn? She did. Uh, this is Stillwater, and Stillwater, I remember seeing Stillwater and Grinder Switch in a double bill at the attic in Greenville, if I'm not mistaken. That's where I saw them. But, uh, boy, that is a very late 70s get up those guys have on it maybe early 80s. One of my favorite singer-songwriters, Steve Goodman, died way too young. Leukemia, I believe, is what got him. Uh, if you're not familiar with Steve Goodman, I'm sure a whole lot of you are, but if you're not familiar with him, he, he you might recognize City of New Orleans, which was a big hit for Arlo Guthrie and later for Willie Nelson. He wrote that. He wrote several songs that Jimmy Buffett recorded. He wrote, you don't have to call me darling, darling. You don't even have to call me by my name, or but you never even call me by my name. Uh, he wrote that with John Prine. He and John Prine were good friends. He's a Chicago guy, so any you Midwestern folks, you know, you probably all know who Steve Goodman is. But this is called Jesse's Jig and Other Favorites, and it's a promo copy on Electra. And one of the things I was trying to do, uh, I was trying to try to collect all the uh, other the brother duos in country music, like uh, Delmore Brothers, Blue Sky Boys, uh, Leuven Brothers, uh, Everly Brothers, and of course, before there was bluegrass, Bill Monroe and his brother Charlie had a duo act, and uh, these are recordings from those two. You're listening to Eddie Adcock, and his guitar, it's just him and the guitar. He plays a little rhythm guitar uh, track on there with his, uh, with his guitar, but other than that, it's just uh, just the one guitar. And Eddie Adcock is a guitarist and uh, band leader. Uh, Eddie Adcock and Second Generation, I believe, was his band. Innovative bluegrass musician for the most part, although this is just simply some flat picking, I guess. Uh, this is on the CMH label. He also, later in life, he had developed some sort of an instrument that looked like a cross between a guitar and a banjo, electric guitar and a banjo. I remember hearing him play or seeing him play sometime. And everybody likes the old dobro. And uh, that's uh, Mike Aldrich, on, and the album is called Dobro. Also, actually, it's the Resonator guitar. I thought Dobro was a brand name. 
but everybody just calls it a Dobro. And uh, this is a this is a really good album. Look forward to listening to this. He was a Dobro player for the seldom seen one of the great bluegrass bands. Important guitarist, you know this guy if you're a Grateful Dead fan, I'm sure. Vassar Clements, really nice album cover there too. Uh, this one's the Vassar Clemens Band. Great violin fiddler. And let's see, is this on Flying Fish? No, it's MCA Records, so it was major label release. And there's another Vassar Clemens album. Great violinist from Florida. Uh, played, I believe, played with Bill Monroe, played with a lot of bluegrass bands, played with Jerry Garcia. And, uh, he, had his, he had his credentials there, I guarantee you that. I heard Tony Rice say that this was the best rhythm guitarist, other than himself, I think, uh, that he knew. You know, bluegrass, uh, Jimmy Martin, by the way, so uh, greatest bluegrass hits. King of Bluegrass, Jimmy Martin. Uh, in early bluegrass, the acoustic guitar was simply a rhythm instrument. You, they didn't take solos. You had banjo solos, you had fiddle solos, dobro, mandolin, but you used the, uh, the acoustic guitar simply to hold down the rhythm, but you, you really need a really, really good rhythm guitarist. It's no easy task. And uh, if Tony Rice, one of the great flat picking guitarists in the world, said that this was the best, or maybe second best next to him, uh, best uh, rhythm guitarist out there, then I'll take his word for it. Anyway, those are the things I picked up at Dis uh, off of Discogs. It set me back a great deal of money, and it's going to give me a lot of enjoyment, a lot of listening enjoyment. And that's it. Uh, I'll just say goodbye to everybody. Remember, be kind to your neighbor. And everybody is your neighbor. It's a small world out there.